Today, we're talking about good old planet Earth. We are constantly spinning at a thousand miles per hour, which you will learn about in my other video. Find the link in the description. This is centrifugal force. Imagine that feeling you get when you're in a car and you take a turn really fast. Your body kind of gets pulled to the opposite direction of the turn. Now, if that pull on your body was happening for billions of years, you might get a little odd shape to your body. And that's what happened to Earth to give us our unique shape that's not flat and not round. And Earth is always changing. From the daily changes in our ocean's tide, the occasional shift of tectonic plates, to the more intense, less frequent events like earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, or meteor strikes. All of these factors give us the end result of an oblate spheroid. So let's review the Earth shapes that are being debated. Flat, round, and egg. So while it's absolutely, without a doubt, not flat, it's also not round. Basically, Earth is wide at the hips and squished on the top and bottom. So exactly like an egg. Wait, no, that's not what an egg looks like. Hello, that's a pumpkin. So everyone was wrong. And if you're enjoying this episode, be sure to like it and leave a comment down below on what you would like to see in the next episode. Earth is actually wider at the equator than anywhere else. In fact, it's 70,000 feet wider. That's about 16 Great Pyramids of Giza, six and a half Eiffel Towers, or 20 Godzillas. Yeah, the difference in the actual shape of Earth and the supposed egg shape are pretty far off. The reality is that visually it's way closer to a sphere than anything else. It's just not perfect. Because our planet isn't perfectly round, we end up with uneven gravity. If you fly up to Canada and visit the Hudson Bay, you'll experience lower gravity. This is because there is less mass in that area. A long time ago, after the last ice age, large glaciers melted across this area of Canada, causing portions of the Earth's mass to be pushed away. Unfortunately, it's a very, very small fraction of 1%. So little that you absolutely will not feel the difference. It's still cool though, right? <laughs> And in the opposite direction, there's more gravity in places like the Himalayan mountains. The North and South Poles also have more gravity than near the equator, because of the whole centrifugal force thing I mentioned. So if you weighed about 100 pounds at the North Pole, you'll end up being 99.65 pounds at the equator. That's not the kind of weight loss that helps you get that beach bod, though. <laughs> hashtag dad bod. Hashtag body positive. Speaking of the North and South Pole, our poles tend to play a little role swapping. Every two to three hundred thousand years, the North and South Poles reverse. It happens over hundreds or thousands of years where the magnetic poles start to move away from the access points of the planet, eventually switching their placement on Earth. Earth. Kind of a weird name. Where does that name even come from? Well, we know it's of Old English and Germanic origin meaning ground, and that it's estimated to be about a thousand years old, but that's it. We don't know the true origin of everyone calling it Earth. It's lost to time. And speaking of time, it's weird how these segues keep working out, huh? Time on Earth has changed a bit since it all started about 4.6 billion years ago. Back then, an entire day was only about six hours long. Why did this change to the 24 hours that we experience today? Well, the moon is actually slowing the Earth down with all the tides that it creates. And every 100 years, the day gets 0.0017 seconds longer. And if you do the math over 4.6 billion years, you'll see that we are actually at 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds to complete a full day. And this results in 365.2564 days per year. And that is why we have leap years every four years where we dump the extra day into February. As always, thanks for watching and what did you learn today? <laughs>